is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmoth. The controversial topic of vaccine mandates will be front and center in Tallahassee tomorrow. Governor DeSantis calling this special session, hoping to stop the mandates that are being pursued by the Biden administration. This morning, our political expert and UCF history professor, Dr. Jim Clark, is here to break down this process and explain why whatever is decided will likely end up in courts. Dr. Clark, great to see you. Thanks for joining us once again. Uh, it's great to be here. Good morning. Good morning to you. Let's talk a special session. Um, starts up on, on Monday, uh, tomorrow, because this will be airing on Sunday. Uh, take us through what we know so far, and what's going to happen in the legislation that's been filed. Well, it's uh, unclear exactly what's going to happen. Uh, basically, this is a session to uh, outlaw requirements that you get vaccinated. Uh, beyond that, there are about 100 questions that remain unanswered. What are, the, what are some of those questions that remain unanswered? Um, the specifics of where, how far this goes, possibly? Yes, the, the, the big question is, will the legislature take on big business? Will they require businesses to uh, ignore the, the vaccination order? Or will they limit it to... Uh, uh, government employees. And that's the big question. We have a situation here in Orlando, for example, where corporate Disney out of California has certain requirements. Uh, and now the legislature may say, in effect, ignore your boss. Don't, don't do what your boss tells you to do. And so you, I know that Disney and Universal and these other companies have their lobbyists in Tallahassee trying to make sure that it doesn't set up a court battle between Disney and Universal and the state of Florida. That seems, that seems inevitable, does it not, though, like that this will ultimately, regardless of what happens uh, during the special session, but certainly if, if things get passed, that it will end up in court. It will end up in court. The question is, who is going to be the plaintiff? Mm. Is it going to be Disney? Is it going to be Universal? Or is it going to be Jerry Demings in Orange County if they limit it to uh, state and local government employees? You know, uh, that's that's part of exactly what I was confused about with this uh, proposed mandate uh, ban. Um, what they're doing in special session is so many companies that operate here are based out of other states. And so you get really tangled in the weeds there. And you say, hey, if you, okay, so if you work at this location in Florida, you don't need to be required. And that just sets up a whole new mess of things. Yeah, I mean, companies cannot uh, uh, do that with good faith and say, hey, you have to get a shot, but you don't have to get a shot. Uh, it destroys their credibility and it sets up uh, grounds for employees to complain. So uh, the big companies don't want this and they don't want to go to federal court. Uh, the last time this happened was over the cruise ships uh, and Norwegian cruise lines went to federal court and sued the state and won. Uh, they got to keep their rules in place for vaccinated and masked uh, uh, passengers. So uh, the track record has tended to favor uh, those who uh, sue the state. It seems like there are other things as well that will be discussed that aren't necessarily, I mean, I guess they do affect uh, kids because, you know, as the, as Pfizer's vaccine rollout begins, we're seeing a number of, of kids getting vaccinated and this, they're also trying to get ahead of the curve here and say, Hey, you're not allowed to make uh, the vaccination for kids a requirement to go to school as well. Same with mask mandates. They're sort of, like, sort of doubling down on, on a previous order on that. Yeah, this is a, a strategy that worked extremely well for the Republican gubernatorial candidate in Virginia, uh, uh, running against the idea of state mandates for kids, kind of don't tell me how to raise my children uh, cries. And uh, the legislature is certainly going to look at that and try to limit the uh, ability of school boards to pass uh, regulations. And again, it will be interesting to see if school boards challenge the governor. You know, just looking at, at this, uh, taking a broader look at it, the governor would not have called this special session 
if he wasn't confident, something would pass. I mean, is that is that a true statement there? That is very true. Governors do not call special sessions unless they have all their ducks in a row. He's met with the leadership. They've all agreed. There is no doubt that legislation that we're talking about is coming out. The question is, what form will it be in? You know, there, there's also talk about um, withdrawing the state from OSHA standards, regulations. Uh, yeah. Talk to me about that and, and what impacts that could have. Well, the idea is we would set up our own OSHA standards. Uh, again, the question is uh, uh, national law versus state law. Can we do that, first of all? And that would certainly be challenged in the courts. And secondly, again, uh, how do big corporations react if if uh, a Disney Corporation is told by OSHA to do something? Can they say, well, it'll apply to everybody but our Florida employees? Mm-hmm. So again, uh, it's kind of a how how much do the does the legislature want to go after big companies who traditionally back the Republicans? And, and finally, and, on the same topic, the, the process and what this looks like um, from, let's just say, a viewer standpoint. And what, what is this just like the legislative session? Will there be, um, you know, comment from from other uh, state representatives and then ultimately the vote is cast? Is that sort of what this will look like? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different in that it's uh, put together so hastily. For the regular session, people start introducing bills months in advance. They, uh, they start holding hearings. This is really compressed, and anything can happen in a special session. And that's going to be the interesting part is not necessarily what's on the table, but what's not on the table. So um, elaborate on that. You're saying that something unrelated to, ma- to, to vaccine mandates could be brought up? Sure. If the leadership permits it, uh, for example, you could see an anti-abortion bill. Uh, you could see a, a whole host of, of issues, or you could just see some, some small local issues that maybe didn't get passed in the uh, session earlier this year, and or, hey, let's correct this, or fix this. So uh, again, the leadership has to agree to this. uh, But uh, we've had sessions that have kind of gone off the rails and uh, passed a number of things that weren't on the original agenda. And with this, with this session, the main focus being such a polarizing uh, topic and vaccine mandates and, and whether businesses should require that, you have to imagine that a lot of eyes will be watching. And so Maybe in the past on certain special sessions, you know, not the the wide margin of folks, the the large majority of them maybe weren't paying attention, but this one certainly will have the the public focus. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Some of these sessions have been called over uh, since 1869 when the first one was called. Some only lasted a few hours Mm -hmm. just to fix something, maybe that was badly worded in a bill uh, and nobody paid any attention to it. Uh, pretty clearly, uh, Floridians have made up their minds, either they support the vaccine or they're against it. Mm-hmm. So um, everybody, I think, is going to be watching this session. Now, another big issue that will come up tomorrow, redistricting. We'll have more on that, plus an early look at how the 2022 governor's race is shaping up. Stay with us. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. A few days ago, the state Senate released its first round of proposed redistricting maps. The once a decade redrawing of district boundaries based on the 2020 census will certainly be a major issue during the 2022 legislative session. But the topic is scheduled to come up this week during the governor's special session on vaccine mandates. UCF history professor and New Six political expert Dr. Jim Clark is back now with details on how this process works. The Republicans obviously control the process for the moment. Uh, Ten years ago, they got carried away and it ended up in the courts and the courts made a lot of decisions. So they don't want to uh, have the courts intervene again. So I think they're going to be a little careful. The problem for the Republicans is even though there are the same number of Democrats and Republicans in Florida, the Republicans control 16 
uh, congressional seats, the Democrats 11. So the state's been pretty well fixed to favor the Republicans. It's going to be hard for them uh, in the legislature to carve out another Republican district. But whatever happens, that new district is going to come somewhere along the I-4 corridor. It, it looks like, based on, based on the data that was gathered in the 2020 census, is that they're going to really focus that, that, that new district on, yeah, Polk, Osceola County line. That's a, that's a big sticking point. But where those lines are drawn will certainly be watched. Yeah, the, the idea is for the Republicans to create districts with a majority of registered Republicans. Um, so, for example, Charlie Crist's district on the West Coast, he's not seeking re-election to run for governor. So the question is, do they make sure it's a Republican district, perhaps by taking voters from the villages, which is definitely a Republican area? Um, do they take some voters from Lake County and move them down to Orange County, maybe to threaten Stephanie Murphy? Uh, so there are a hundred different uh, configurations. And over the next uh, few months, you're going to see all of them. You know, I do want to go and have a little bit of a history lesson just for folks who are unaware of 2010 and what happened there, because uh, there was a legal challenge that revealed uh, gerrymandering occurred when drawing these, the, the, the maps and the districts. Uh, and they, they, that was only revealed after, you know, they, because it's not a public, it's not a public uh, event. It's not a public process. There's no public input, and so after that was released, that was revealed, and and there are now measures and laws in place to prevent that from happening, right? So take us through what 2010 revealed, what happened, and what changed after that. Yeah, uh, what was revealed was there are lots of emails that came out, uh, lots of uh, private conversations that came out which showed clearly that special interest groups were behind drawing the maps, uh, frankly, rather than the legislature. And so the courts took that into consideration and they kind of took over the process. Uh, and so the Republicans don't want a repeat of that uh, this year. So um, they have the votes in the legislature to uh, do some tinkering and I think that's what you're going to see. I think uh, the Charlie Chris district and the Stephanie Murphy district are going to be the two big Republican targets. Mm. Very interesting. Maybe using uh, Orange County and wherever Stephanie Murphy has a has a Democratic stronghold and branching out a little bit to perhaps, as you mentioned, Lake County, perhaps a little bit of Brevard County, maybe a little Seminole and trying to find those little pockets to, to cut into that. What would that expected margin? Exactly. Bill Posey over in Brevard County wins by huge margins. Mm -hmm. So they could take 10 or 20,000 Republican voters out of his district, put them into Stephanie Murphy's district and threaten her. She won comfortably last time mm -hmm. by about 6%. But if you put 10 or 20,000 uh, Republicans in her district, it could change the math. You mentioned Charlie Crist and... Um, the gubernatorial race is is really starting to at least get a little bit more buzz. Um, more than a dozen candidates have filed, including uh, Governor Ron DeSantis seeking re-election. Um, when do you expect things to really heat up, though, with this race? Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Governor DeSantis has raised an incredible amount of money. Uh, he's become a national figure, as you know. Um, meanwhile, uh, the, uh, the Charlie Chris campaign and the Nikki Freed campaign are kind of struggling to raise money. Uh, the Democratic Governors Association has already announced that they're kind of going to stay out of Florida, which is a huge blow for for whoever gets the nomination. Uh, I think the, the thinking is uh, nationally that DeSantis is not beatable and let's not waste our money on uh, a challenge. So um, it's going to be interesting to see, A, who wins the nomination and whether it's worth anything or not. Right. And that's probably the same can be said, uh, at least on not spending a lot of time in Florida when it comes to the, the Senate race as well between 
uh, Senator Marco Rubio and um, and uh, Congresswoman Demings, because that's I mean, a number of candidates will be running, but that's really the marquee matchup um, projected. It is. And and uh, Val Demings will be able to raise money. She has much more of a national profile, uh, mm -hmm. thanks to being on the short list for uh, President Biden's vice presidential nominee, thanks to her work on the first impeachment uh, uh, committee in the House. And so she's going to be able to raise money. The Democrats do care about that race uh, because there's a lot of anti Marco Rubio feeling in the Democratic Party. And also, they'd like to see Marco Rubio have to spend money and, and maybe have the Republicans spend money in Florida so they can't spend it somewhere else. Not to mention, race could tilt uh, power in, in the Senate. And that is obviously, as we all know, is uh, significant. So a little bit more of a, of a power swing for Democrats if they take that seat rather than just winning the gubernatorial race. That's exactly right. It is so close. And there are more Republicans up next year, which means they have more seats to defend. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting, Justin, to see uh, if the Democrats can, in fact, improve their situation. You know, the governor has done a good job at uh, deflecting the rumors on 24. Um, is there any impact of him filing uh, for reelection, seeking reelection in 22 for to to retain his governorship uh, with the, is there any impact for 20 uh, for 24 then looking ahead with that? No, obviously it helps him to have a base and he's able to use Florida as his base. Uh, candidates who have quit public office and then run for president thinking, oh, I'll, you know, I'll get rid of my day job in effect have never done well. And so uh, you need that base, uh, you need it to get people to contribute and to give you a pulpit, a bully pulpit, as Teddy Roosevelt said, to uh, command the media. Otherwise, you're just some guy who, you know, out of public office calling a press conference. That's a good point. And not to mention, we don't know about 24 until one person decides whether or not they're going to run. Uh, and so that's that's really what if you're a Republican and you're eyeing for the chance to take on Joe Biden, um, that's that's really what you're waiting on. You're waiting on uh, Mr. Trump to decide whether or not he's going to go. Yeah. And that's the fascinating thing. Ordinarily, by now, you would have a dozen Republicans in Iowa, for example, this weekend speaking at every uh, chicken dinner they could find. And uh, President Trump has frozen the field. And so nobody is doing anything. Nobody's raising money. Nobody's out campaigning. So it's going to set up a strange kind of election if he does not run. And again, the special session on vaccine mandates begins tomorrow at the state capitol. News 6 and ClickOrlando.com will have extensive coverage throughout the week. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.